And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Chindisaurus, which was a request from Paleo Mike 716 and Crow via our Patreon and Discord. So thank you. Chindisaurus was a basal sauruscian that lived in the late Triassic in what is now Arizona in the U.S., and maybe it's also been found in New Mexico and Texas. It looks like a small theropod, walked on two legs, and it had a long tail. So if it's a sauruscian, that means it could be either a theropod or a sauropod, right? Yes. Well, it's considered to be basal. So it's at a point before the sauropods, before the sauropodomorphs, I should say, and the theropods split off. The type and only species is Chindisaurus brian smalli. A partial skeleton was found in the Petrified Forest National Park in 1984 and then was airlifted out in 1985. And that area, in the 1920s, Charles Camp from the University of California at Berkeley collected fossils and took photos of the petrified forest. And then in the 1980s, Robert Long from Berkeley found camp sites. And Brian Small, who was on the team collecting fossils, found the ankle bone of Chindisaurus, which is how he got that species name. At the time that Chindisaurus was found, it was thought to be the oldest dinosaur ever found. Oh, really? So like earliest in the Mesozoic, in other words? Yeah. And so in the 80s. And so it was really big news when it was airlifted out. And the holotype has a nickname, Gertie. That's after Gertie the dinosaur. <laughs> that tells you about when it was found. Yeah. <laughs> Gertie the really amazing, super early animation from like the 19-teens, right? 1914, yeah. It's also sometimes known as the Chindi Point dinosaur because of where the specimen was found. So even though it was airlifted out in 1985, Chindisaurus wasn't described until 1995 by R.A. Long and P.A. Murray. And the genus name, Chindisaurus, means ghost lizard or lizard from Chindi Point. Hmm. That's like Spectrovenator. Except that's ghost hunter instead of ghost lizard. (laughs) A little bit, yeah. And in a different language, obviously. Well, so this genus name comes from the Navajo word Chindi, which means ghost or evil spirit. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Ghost and fossil do seem to make sense together although i never think of fossils as ghost-like i don't either i always think of them as like this is what it was like when it was alive and i think of them almost as living things maybe because fossils are tangible yeah yeah that's true they're not they don't have that same like elusive quality of a ghost (laughs) and so the species name brian small is in honor of brian small who found the holotype who would have guessed it (laughs) yeah the holotype includes vertebrae, limb bones, and hip fragments, and it was prepared at the University of California Museum of Paleontology in Berkeley, California. Now, fragmentary skeletons have been found in Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, but not all of these may belong to Chindisaurus. Mm, okay. These referred specimens, they're incomplete, and they include vertebrae and femur fragments, although there was one complete femur found in 2006 in Ghost Ranch, New Mexico. More ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> But some of these referred specimens might not be Chindisaurus because they don't have features unique to Chindisaurus. They're too fragmentary to know. Hmm. In 2019, Adam Marsh and others said that only the holotype should be considered to be Chindisaurus. There was a partial ilium found in Texas in the Tacovas Formation that was thought to be Chindisaurus. But then in 1998, Hunt and others named it as a new taxon, Casasaurus. In 2004, though, Langer said that Casasaurus and Chindisaurus were the same, and Nesbitt and others supported this idea in 2007, saying that what made Casasaurus and Chindisaurus different was just variation in size, but they didn't formally synonymize the two because that ilium of Chindisaurus is too fragmentary. So, again, too hard to compare. Then in 2018, Barron and Williams re-described Casasaurus and found, yes, that's a valid dinosaur. So we're back to just the holotype is Chindisaurus. And that holotype may not be an adult that's based on an unfused ankle. Long and Murray estimated Chindisaurus to be 9.9 to 13.1 feet or 3 to 4 meters long and to have a stout body, long legs, and a long neck. But then in 2012, Benson and Brusati estimated Chindisaurus to be 6.6 feet to 7.5 feet or 2 to 2.3 meters long. Also in 2012, Holtz estimated Chindisaurus to be about 6.6 feet or 2 meters long and weigh 50 to 100 pounds or 23 to 45 kilograms, or about the same as a wolf. 
interesting. That's pretty small, but I mean, if you're talking about Triassic stuff that's even older than the first sauropodomorphs, this is actually not that small. It seems like maybe even fairly large for these basal creatures, at least the early estimate. The later estimates seem more typical. Yeah, it's still pretty big for Triassic, I think. No skull of Chindisaurus has been found, but Chindisaurus did have large tail vertebrae at the base that got longer towards the tip of the tail. It also had long, low cervical vertebrae, so its neck was probably light and slender, and it had a large crescent-shaped femur. Yeah, sounds like uh, pretty much all the early (laughs) dinosaurs. Yeah. There's been a lot of debate over what type of dinosaur Chindisaurus was. At times, it was thought to be a basal sauropodomorph, and then later thought to be a herrerasaurid. So now we just say sauriscian. <laughs> basal sauriscian. Yeah, 2007, Nesbitt and others, and Ermis and others suggested it was a basal sauriscian. And when those are the only bones you have, you don't have a skull, and you're you're just basing it on a couple of body elements that have a lot in common with other animals, that's probably, yeah, the best you can do. Yeah. A phylogenetic analysis found Chindisaurus to be a sister taxon, so very closely related to a Tawa Hale. Previously, Chindisaurus was thought to be a Herrerasaurid and Tawa was thought to be a theropod, but now they're thought to be very closely related. And they're both placed within basal Sauriscia, which, again, that's before sauropodomorphs and theropods split off. In 2019, Adam Marsh and others re-described Chindisaurus and found Chindisaurus and Tawa to be, quote, a potentially diverse group of early theropods prior to the end Triassic mass extinction. Yeah, potentially early theropods or potentially early sauropodomorphs or potentially before either of those. <laughs> yeah, it just seems difficult to classify Triassic animals. Yeah. In 2019, Morgan Schaller and others, researchers from the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and University of Texas, Austin, found that oxygen levels rapidly increased over a 3 million year period around the time that Chindisaurus lived. So what they did was they analyzed small amounts of gas from rocks from the Colorado Plateau and the Newark Basin. They were around 621 miles or 1,000 kilometers away from each other when it was Pangaea and they were near the equator. And that was around 215 million years ago. And they found that oxygen levels went from 15% to 19% And there was a drop in carbon dioxide levels. And for comparison, today we're at 21% oxygen levels. So there's probably a global change in oxygen levels around this time. Also around this oxygen peak, that's when some of the first dinosaurs appeared in the tropics of what's now North America, like Chindisaurus. Though dinosaurs were in what is now South America earlier, about 232 million years ago. But sauropods came soon after. That's really what you want. Yeah. Yeah. So these higher oxygen levels, they might have helped animals grow larger. Maybe. Maybe. There's probably a lot of factors. Uh, At the very least, the environmental changes were good for evolutionary diversification. Though, again, there might have been other factors that helped. That's a good point. Yeah, because the drop in oxygen killed some stuff off. And then when it bounces back, all of a sudden dinosaurs have some space to go into. (laughs) Yeah. So Chindisaurus lived on an ancient floodplain, and other animals that lived around the same time and place included archosaurs, pseudosuchians, tetrapods, phytosaurus, coelophysis, lungfish, and clams. There's a short documentary, and thank you to PaleoMike716 who told us about this. It's about 30 minutes long that was made about Chindisaurus in 1988 called A Whopping Small Dinosaur. <laughs> And that's about the expedition and assembly of Chindisaurus. Whopping small. Yeah. (laughs) I wonder how many times they call it Gertie. It's a good nickname. Mm Mm-hmm. I could definitely see if you found a sauropod around the time that that animation was popular. Name it Gertie. Although it ends up maybe not being a sauropod. Certainly not a Gertie-like big you sauropod. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) But it could be because Gertie was the first animated dinosaur and this was thought to be the oldest dinosaur at the time oh yeah that's a good point yeah like oldest that it's like a historical Mm -hmm. thing yeah (laughs) for those of you who listen to our dinosaur of the day segment and you like it please consider becoming a patron we take new dinosaur of the day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well so check out our page at patreon.com slash i know dino or click the link on the left